video is a uh, really going to be a reference video because as you will see it's one of these things that we really do have to be aware of this is the anatomy of a CME and what I'm going to do here is to take a frame by frame of the most recent two large CMEs that just came off of our Sun and had the Earth been where Mars is at, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, so a coronal mass ejection is caused by typically um, either a filament release off the sun or it could be a, a sunspot. In this case, we know the sunspot group that did this and we'll be studying that here uh, as well. All right, so let's go. All right, this is uh, July. 22nd, you can see the time code at the bottom. And what was significant about these two events were the long duration. I'll just put it uh, that. They were intense as well, as you will see. So here we have the beginning of the recording of the first blast. And you can see in this frame right here, it's enormous. Um, the fact that it literally covered, and you will actually see it was a full, what they call a full halo uh, CME, is just incredible. Um, look at that. The intensity, the shock waves that are going out. And, you know, when you stop and think about this and consider the amount of particles dense particles. I mean, this is matter coming right off of our star. It's an incredible display. Look at this. Now we've reached the full halo effect. Um, and you can see over at the two o'clock position, the intensity right here. It's just enormous. You take that this is the sun right here. Get the whole idea. Look at, you can see how it's concaving here uh, to the size of the sun itself. It's just incredible. Look at that. And you can study as well how the shock waves are going out and then the particles. It's just in, uh, amazing when you see the intensity and look at this. It just continues. We're at here, we're at uh, 548, 6 o'clock, and you can still see, I always find it odd, <laughs> how when you get energy, how it can begin to form a sphere within itself. Just immense energy of a level that's just, um, <laughs> what can you say? This is 612, still. Look at it, it's expanding, 624, still going on, 636, still emitting, 7 o'clock, 712, 736. Now, this is the second one that was ejected out. And here you can begin to see and notice the time code at the bottom. This is on the 28th. Look at that. Just, I marvel at the amount of ejecta that's coming out. This camera, uh, which is looking where the Earth's position is, so we can, it's kind of almost like an early warning. ACE is out there, there's a lot of others, but just amazes me again when you stop and consider that if the earth was right in here, I mean, we'd be a little dot, right? Um, folks, that would be a killer shot. We don't think about this, but these events happen. And if you don't remember, I'll bring you to an event called the Carrington event that happened in the 1800s. In fact, now it's actually a, um, it's a principle called the Carrington Effect that 
we know that if this stellar matter, which the Earth was uh, in the view of a huge solar flare, just fried the whole telegraph systems. And of course, electricity was not that um, in use. We were able to recover. Today, we know the effects. There's been enough studies done that literally, folks, three days from anarchy. In fact, I would say that it's less than that. I'd give it actually one hour uh, and all hell will break loose. And we need to study this. You and I need to study this. We can't rely on the scientist alone. We have to take responsibility and we have great tools today in which any person, a child, could come in here and do as I have done. Now, I've been studying these for years. And you begin to understand that our solar system, it's not this neat little safe place that we have this false sense of a warp perception about. We live in a very unpredictable and dangerous solar system, galaxy. Just by the way, you are aware that the Milky Way and the dwarf Sagittarius uh, galaxy, you do realize they're colliding right now, right? And I'll just give you something. As you study these frames, and as I do, you need to look at certain things that you can begin like here. Check this out. So the camera is picking up objects that are traveling very fast. And if you understand the principles of photons, how they travel, uh, speed, etc., we're catching some very fast moving objects. And look at this. This stream just continues on. And folks, you really wouldn't want to be in the path of this. Now, here's what caused these CMEs. You ready? July 11th, 2017. We know this group. And again, there is this phenomenon that's taking place called the uh, Earth Quiet Effect. Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers talks about it. And, you know, it's happened enough so many times that there's strong validation to it. So we know the Sunspot group. By the way, that was a weird frame. Um, watch it as it begins to exit out. Now, as it was exiting out, if you pay attention to this magnetic spread right here, uh, here is the core sunspot group, but as, and I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll advance it back so you can see. Watch. You see that? And then pay attention to this area up here, of these smaller sunspots that just disappeared, but they begin to have a magnetic um, impression as well. That's not the right word, but it's the best word I can think of at the moment. So you can see the spread right here. Very evident, very evident up here. And in the last frame, you can really begin to see it as it goes out. So three days later, this sunspot released the killer shot. Did it twice. Uh, Mars, I'd be curious to see how our satellites handle it. But the point is, at some point in time, Earth is going to not be, how shall we say, in the continued Goldilocks zone. Uh, I can firmly believe that at some point in time, we are going to get hit by an X-class flare. And depending on who's in front of the time, they're going to get spanked the hardest. But again, we're so connected globally that if one side of the world, let's say the whole grid went down, it, it would have a cascading effect. 
So it's something to keep uh, aware of. You should become knowledgeable. I'll leave you some links. In fact, I'll tell you what, before we go, let's go over to the Soho website and you can see what this looked like in real time. Hold on one second. Is that actual um, grouping that we, I showed you frame by frame? So that's the one that did it. And as it sailed away, it takes about 14 days. Once it passes the limb and gets onto the other side, and you can see that magnetic spread that I was talking about. So what we have to keep in mind here that this is going to be back next week. And if it still continues the way that it's looking like, uh, we can see it coming in. Oh. Let's see how lucky the Earth really is. By the way, I want to leave you with a, uh, another oddity, shall we say. So this has been going around. Um, another YouTube channel out there, uh, BP Earth Watch, put this up. And I looked at it myself, and, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, I think he's got a point. So here's the deal. Uh, this was 2012, as you can see the time code down below. They were having CMEs as well. Um, and then the camera, which it does, um, really messed up. And it will get literally uh, out of adjustment. And we get these crazy uh, distortions. It's very difficult to really kind of see what's going on. This is the uh, oculator right now everyone points out to this object down here uh, I think it's more strange to be candid with you is the object that it's being cast here but that's just my take on it um, I'm not sure if this is part of the camera it's not itself I don't know it could be a part in there who you know when you look at Sechi there's just so much that we they don't talk about uh, in telling us you have to do your own research and see how these satellites are built and look at the internal components but I find this one really odd this is what really caught my attention so anyway the point to all this is is that uh, then it goes back into frame and you can see the CME now here is on the 22nd of 2017 and this was right before the, you know, release of that killer shot of the uh, Sunspot group. Boom! We have it again. Now, it's inverted this time. And again, the oculator here, this is the sun itself. So you can see it's blacked out here, right? Now we have our little thing there, whatever that is. But I always find it, it's... You know, when you look at the compression waves here, and it's these little tiny things that I see that, I don't know, that I find unusual. Uh, but these are interesting pictures, and then it goes back directly um, to the normal place that we see it. A lot of crazy stuff out there, folks. I have another video I'm doing in which we're going to be talking about... Um, the science of photons so that we can understand that when we see light like this what are we actually seeing what is the camera recording and when you understand in its very simple physics photons speed mass and what the camera is picking up so when we see solid objects like this, we immediately go, okay, is that a planet? Well, in this case, this is a planet. Um, in fact, I believe that's Mars. So the point is as well, I'll leave you with one other point, is that what we cannot see is spatial displacement. And what I mean by that is that it's difficult for us to constantly keeping our thought process 
that we can't see what's close and what's far away. And so that presents a problem every time you try to do these analysis because you're assuming that maybe the camera, this is in front, closer to the camera, or this is further away, in this case, behind the sun. It's very difficult. But anyway, one other thing, a good book for you to read one second after. Listen, the odds are, if you were looking this in a statistics class, right, that just the nominal data, as you continue to see it come in, that the chances of either a CME or an EMP happening are, let's say, greater than 95%. So if that is the case, then it's a matter of intensity, right? Or <laughs> locality, and or both. So great book to read. I think you would be, it's a very good read. I'll just put it that way. Excellent, excellent. And I believe the narrative that how humanity is right now, how quickly um, things will begin to break down. All right, folks, be kind to one another. We'll talk soon.